Today we're going to be talking about probability density functions, and in this particular problem we've been given the function f of x equals 30x squared times the quantity 1 minus x squared. We've been told that this equation defines the function on the interval 0 to 1, and we've been told that the function is 0 for all other values of x, so outside of the interval 0 to 1, the function is equal to 0. So that's how the function's been defined, and we've been asked to do two things. One, verify that f of x is a probability density function, and two, to find the probability that x is less than or equal to one-third. And that's what this means here, the probability that x is less than or equal to one-third. So in order to verify that f of x is a probability density function, we need to do two things. First, we need to show that f of x is greater than or equal to zero everywhere in its domain. And secondly, we need to show that the integral of f of x on the range negative infinity to positive infinity is equal to 1. If we can prove those two things, then we can prove that f of x is a probability density function. So our first task is to show that f of x is greater than or equal to 0 in its entire domain. Well, we know that for all values outside of the interval 0 to 1, f of x is equal to 0. So that would satisfy the condition that f of x must be greater than or equal to 0. So this part checks out. Now the first part here, we need to show that between 0 and 1, because this equation here defines the interval 0 to 1, so between 0 and 1, this equation must be greater than or equal to 0. Well, if we take the leftmost boundary here, 0, and we plug that in, obviously we're going to get 0 times 1. It's just going to give us 0, so that's equal to 0. At our uppermost boundary, 1, if we plug that in, we get 30 times 0. That's still 0. And everywhere in between is going to give us a positive value because you can imagine if we take some value between 0 and 1, let's say for example 0.5, 1 minus anything that's between 0 and 1 will give us a positive number. So we'll get a positive number here for 1 minus x. When we square it, we still get a positive number. And if we take that same positive value and plug it in here, then 30x squared will give us a positive value as well. A positive times a positive gives us a positive, which means that this part here checks out as well for being greater than or equal to zero everywhere in the interval zero to one. So we've shown that each piece of the function f of x is greater than or equal to zero everywhere in its domain. So that's the first part. The second part is showing that the integral from negative infinity to positive infinity of f of x dx is equal to one. Now in this particular case, in our particular function f of x, we know that for all values outside of the interval 0 to 1, the value of the function is 0. So because the value is 0, it won't affect the value between 0 and 1. So if we are able to determine that the value of the function from 0 to 1, that the area under the curve, the integral, is equal to 1, then we can add 0 to that and we still get 1. So all we have to verify is that the integral of f of x on the interval 0 to 1 is equal to 1. And if we can show that, then this second line here doesn't affect it. So what we want to do is rewrite the integral as the integral from 0 to 1 of 30x squared times the quantity 1 minus x squared. And we want to take the integral of that and verify that it's equal to 1. We'll go ahead and simplify our integral by multiplying 1 minus x times 1 minus x and then distributing across that the 30x squared. Now we'll use power rule to take the integral. We'll simplify and then plug in our limits of integration. Now what we get when we do the arithmetic here is 10 minus 15 plus 6, which is equal to 1. 
So because we were able to show earlier that f of x is greater than or equal to zero for all values in its domain, and that the integral of f of x from negative infinity to positive infinity is equal to one, we've in fact verified that f of x is a probability density function. Now we want to find the probability that x is less than or equal to one third. And the way that we do that is the same way that we found the integral of f of x from zero to one, we just replace the limits of integration with zero and one third. So because our interval here is bounded on the left hand side by zero, when they say the probability that x is less than or equal to one third, we know that what they really mean is less than or equal to one third and greater than or equal to zero because the left hand side here is bounded by zero. So in order to figure out that probability, really all we need to do is take the same integral, but plug in the limit of integration, the upper limit of integration, one third instead of one. So we can take the same evaluation of the integral that we had earlier, and we'll just plug in this limit of integration here, one third. Then we'll just simplify to get our final answer. And when we reduce this fraction by dividing both numerator and denominator by three, we see that our final answer is 17 over 81. That's the probability that x is less than or equal to one third. So I hope you found that video helpful. If you did, like this video down below and subscribe to be notified of future videos.